And welcome, everyone, to an off-season chat here on the Big Ten Network. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by Nebraska's uh, Trey McGowans. Your brother Bryce now is on the team. You guys have been there all summer working out. you got a podcast, uh, so things are moving in the right direction, some momentum. What's it been like to make this a bit of a family affair in Lincoln? Um, I mean, it's definitely been fun. Um, I mean, I mean, nobody would have ever thought me and Bryce would have been playing um, college together. I mean, we didn't even play middle school, high school, um, or none of that together. So, um, I mean, when he decided to come here, I mean, it was definitely a lot of excitement in the family. Um, my mom was kind of nervous. She didn't she didn't know um, how it was going to go, um, just because she just remembers us when we were, like, real young, just arguing a whole lot. But, I mean, we have our own space, so really – um, the only time we kind of like see each other like in a competitive state is really in practice. So other than that, um, I mean, I'm just excited for the year. I'll be able to play with my brother. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this is a great example of you staying that had you not, you wouldn't have had this opportunity, this sort of once in a lifetime opportunity to play with your brother in college. Um, how much did any of that factor into your decision of saying, you know what, I want to stay put. I want to get myself ready to potentially play at the next level and help Nebraska turn the corner? Um, I mean, since the day I committed to come here, um, just talks with the coaching staff um, and really just talks with um, the guys that kind of came in last year, um, the ones that are still here. Um, that, that was really the goal um, on the reason why we came here, um, kind of work towards something um, that Nebraska hadn't done before. So you had a solid statistical season last season. Uh, it was a year like no other, obviously, for any of us in all our lives. And there was a lot of stop and starting. Um, and it was hard to get in a rhythm as Fred Hoiberg was sort of overhauling the roster. Um, there's a lot of new pieces. Another transfer like yourself, Alonzo Verge, coming from Arizona State, very successful down in Tempe. What's your level of optimism right now that Nebraska can be a serious – contender for postseason berth in some form or fashion in the Big Ten? Um, I mean, I was super excited, um, really just coming off um, the end of the season, um, one. And then, I mean, just the guys that Coach had brought in um, during the summer. Um, even before we knew um, Zoe, Zoe would be here. Um, I mean, we've got, we got, got a lot of playmakers, a lot of shooters, um, really to kind of fill the spots that we were kind of missing last year. And then, I mean, when, it, when we brought Zoe in um, after the first day, really the first week um, of competing, um, it, it just went up um, so much more. How ready are you to be that go-to player to take that responsibility on your shoulders? Um, I mean, it was it's something that I've been um, working towards since really since the season ended and kind of was working on um, the, during the end of the season last year. Um, just trying to look ahead, trying to be that guy. And I mean, really just being able to carry our team um, to a lot of wins and shit. You can uh, provide a little bit of an interesting perspective of playing a couple years in the ACC, now entering your second season in the Big Ten. How would you compare it? Um, I would say Big Ten, I feel like ACC had probably bigger names. Um, but I mean, schools um, or teams all together, um, I definitely got to give it to the um, Big Ten. Um, just, I mean, the pace of play um, and, I mean, really the size. Um, I mean, there's a lot tall, taller teams um, in the Big Ten, I feel. Um, so, yeah. You know, one thing you did not experience because of the pandemic was a full house. And when the fans are there in Nebraska, that place can be rocking. Uh, what are you anticipating – this season looking like? Um, I mean, really the, everything that um, they kind of told me um, coming in um, before I got in Nebraska, um, kind of the recruit pitch. Um, I mean, re really just packed out fans and just be able to run. Um, I mean, <laughs> that, that's pretty much it. Um, just excited um, style of basketball um, that Coach Hoiber, um kind of likes to play at. And then, I mean, with a packed crowd, I mean, <laughs> that's just a win-win all right so look you're there i'm not uh in in looking at nebraska within the big 10 it, it's hard to put them I, I i i'll be honest i don't know where to put nebraska because there's going to be so many new pieces uh to compliment you obviously i know alonzo uh but you tell me what have you seen in practice from some players that we're not talking about 
that's going to make Nebraska a team that's going to finish in that either middle or upper part of the Big Ten? Um, probably, um, I mean, the names that probably I don't talk about a lot, um, I would have to go with um, C.J. Wilcher um, and Lat Man. Um, C.J. Wilcher, to me, he's a knockdown shooter. Um, at extra floor spacing, um, kind of gives us the shooting that we were kind of missing last year. Um, I mean, really, since the first day, I think we had pickup um, first day, and then just just seeing um, how CJ shoots the ball, um, he doesn't miss a whole lot, um, especially if he's open. Um, you can um, pretty much just put it up there. Um, but I mean, really, let me in. Um, we kind of saw him um, take a shot um, toward the end of the season when he kind of. Got to play the four position a little bit. Um, consider, I mean, he played guard kind of his whole life. Um, but, I mean, with Derek being out, um, like having to play the five last year, kind of not his natural position. And he was playing it like pr probably not even 200 pounds, 200 pounds at the, at the most. Um, I mean, going against guys like Luca um, and other bigs in the Big Ten. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really just excited um, to see the strides that Lat made this year. He came home with me um, and we were really, really just working out um, and just seeing Lat healthy again, um, something we kind of saw last summer. Um, but I mean, the beating, I mean, the bigs in the Big Ten are going to give you if you barely 200 pounds. So um, he was he was kind of roughed up a little bit. So I'm definitely excited to see that. And, and Trey, you know, actually having a summer, uh, because once again, you and everyone else didn't get that last summer. How much of a difference will that make? For a team like Nebraska, um, I think it'll make a um, huge difference, um, especially how many pieces we brought in last year, and kind of not the getting the chemistry and really getting to know each other um, the way we would have liked. Um, especially considering only a couple people could be in the gym at a time um, last summer, and then I mean, looking now, everybody can be in the gym together. Um, people can hang out um, off the court without really worry about COVID um, too much. So I mean. Really getting to know the guys, knowing everybody's tendencies, um, and what each other likes to do. And, and lastly, Trey, how much do you think name, image, and likeness (NIL)? We talked about the podcast. How much is that going to change things for college athletes, uh, especially this first season with it? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I really don't kind of don't know too much, but um, I'm really just super excited. I know um, the NIL going to pick up. I mean, of course, like as it gets into the season, it gets closer to the season, more deals. <laughs> Um, or whatnot, but I mean, I'm really just excited um, to see how um, the players can market themselves, um, especially considering they can make um, money off their name, image, and likeness. Well, Trey, appreciate it. Can't wait to see you and uh, and your brother and everyone else in Nebraska on the floor in a full house in Lincoln. Uh, it'll be here before we know it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.